Microsoft is trying to take the portable productivity laptop crown away from Apple and their latest M1 offerings by releasing the brand new Microsoft Surface Laptop 4. This has some very unique offerings, both in the processor department and also the longevity department, which is notable when we are talking about a Windows laptop. I bought this laptop a little over a week ago and have now used it to draft several scripts and conduct research over the past week. And I've also done an email or two in that time. So how has it held up? Let's find out. What is... Nothing wants to slam anymore. And while we're finding out, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, Squarespace. What's up, everyone? I'm the Everyday Dad, and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. So this is gonna be a little bit harder of a video than normal to make, because there are so many options out there when you are customizing your own personal Surface Laptop 4. And it's gonna be hard because while, yes, I bought this specific offering, some of the choices that you can make on their website could lead you to have a drastically different outcome for your computer. There are different size options of a 13 or 15 inch laptop, different finishing options with a more felt-like option or a fully metal one, and you can even get different processors between Intel and Ryzen. This is a computer that could be vastly different depending on what you buy, so keep that in mind as we talk about my specific laptop today. I have the 13 inch, 256 gigabyte storage, eight gigabytes of RAM, Alcantara coated body with the Ryzen 5 4680U processor, and this ran me $999. You can also spec this Ryzen model up to 16 gigabytes of RAM for $1199. Now on the Intel side of the house, you could get the Surface 4 with an 11th gen Intel Core i5, eight gigabytes of RAM, and 256 gigabyte solid state drive for $999. But to add a little more confusion to it, you can go all the way up to an Intel Core i7, 32 gigabytes of RAM, and a one terabyte solid state drive for $2299. And to keep, okay, to keep the confusion to a minimum, that's as far as I'm going to take it today. If you wanna hear more about the 15 inch version, let me know in the comments and maybe I'll try to get my hand on one of those so we can also talk about that. But we don't have it now and I don't wanna go through all of that craziness too, so let's move on. As this is an X time later video, let's talk about the things that I've liked and the things that I haven't liked over the past week of solid use. Now I did, today I currently typed this script on the Surface Laptop 13 and the reason I'm telling you this now is there are some things that absolutely irritated me as I was typing and so yeah, we're gonna start off with the negatives because I'm gonna get back at this laptop for that. And the absolute first thing I do not like about the Surface Laptop 4 is the flex on the body of the keyboard. It's atrocious. And I don't wanna use that word lightly. Every single key press on this computer causes the laptop's body to flex a very noticeable amount. And it's so noticeable that even when I'm typing and I don't look at the keyboard when I type because huge online nerd flex here, but. You know, I don't actually have to look at the keyboard when I'm typing at it. That's my, you know, I'm an older millennial, so that should be pretty notable for me, right? Even then I can feel the keyboard flex underneath my fingers. I have heard that this is only a problem for the felt type covering and all of the metal versions don't have this problem, which leads me to say that if typing is for you and something you do often, do not buy the Alcantara model. I try not to be overly negative about products because I'm a project manager myself. I totally get the design choices are not made in a vacuum and no one sets out to make their system bad in any way. But when I can get the body of the laptop to flex by pressing a key light enough that the key doesn't even go all the way in, that's a problem. I mean, look at this. Can you see this? Check this out. Like that body of the laptop is flexing and I'm not even pressing these keys all the way in. When you do press them in, it's just, it's outrageous, which is unfortunate because the keys themselves feel amazing to type on. I bet if I had the metal version, this would rival the MacBook for how much I like using it for scripting or email writing. And we'll talk more specifically about the keyboard in the things I like, because I do like it. But that flex, fam, that flex is awful. Next up in the things I don't like. I don't like the port selection on any of the options. I don't like the port selections on this version of the laptop. You get one USB-C, one USB-A, and a headphone jack. That's it, that's it. I used to beat up on Apple for not having enough ports on their laptops with just the two USB-C Thunderbolt ports. But Microsoft really went out of their way to try and top even Apple in this regard. And it's like they got it half right because I like that there is a variety of ports. I wish more high-end laptops continued to have USB-A because so many accessories like keyboards and mice, they still to this day 
come in that flavor of port option. But I wish they'd done this on both sides. So you get a USB-A and USB-C, and then a USB-A and a USB-C. It's just like, why limit it so much? And because of that, it leads to another problem with something I don't like. This laptop doesn't have Thunderbolt. Normally when I check out a Ryzen laptop, that's not surprising because for the most part, Ryzen motherboards don't go through the Thunderbolt certification process. So they rarely, rarely ever get that capability added. But when I did some research, according to the folks over at Tom's Guide, even the Intel version doesn't have Thunderbolt, which is shocking to me. The whole point of like getting an Intel processor in Windows land anymore is getting Thunderbolt. And that's incredibly disappointing to me. I don't know that I've ever come across a computer that has worse port selection than my MacBooks. And normally you can make up for a lack of ports with the versatility of Thunderbolt. You can plug in so much stuff and you get so much capability from plugging into a Thunderbolt port. So it can make a computer with less ports still have functionality. I'm just not a big fan of having less ports and less versatility. And the last thing is something that I kind of like and dislike is the method of charging. I don't like that there's a proprietary plug for charging. Now, I will make sure to also ding the Apple laptops if they do this too, but I just don't like proprietary plugs when it comes to power. This is not an SD card slot, this is the power slot. Unless your computer is something like a gaming laptop and it needs more than the 100 watts of power that you can get via Thunderbolt and USB-C, in that instance, yes. Obviously, you would need something that can provide a bit more oomph but in a productivity style Ultrabook, I'm not sold on having a proprietary port. That's a lot of negative about the computer. And it's been this video's been kind of harsh so far, which is weird because I do absolutely think this is a good laptop. And I've really enjoyed using this over the past week, but there are just some design choices that make very little sense to me. Okay, let's move on because there is a lot that I've liked about this computer over the past week. And first up, let's continue our discussion of the charger. While I don't like the proprietary charging plug, I actually really like the charger itself. It's a neat little squat brick that I like the feel and the shape of, and I like that it also has a USB-A plugged into it. I like this style more than a traditional included Apple MacBook charger. I wish it had USB-C at the end of this, but because the computer only has one USB-C port, that might not have ended as well as I'd liked. The next thing that I've really liked is the size of the overall laptop. I'm all in on small portable machines for work, and this is right up there with the MacBook Air as a fantastically light travel machine. And continuing on about the body of the laptop, again, I like that it's shaped like the MacBook Air. It has a slight wedge shape to the lower part of the body, making it very nice and ergonomic if you are going to spend a large chunk of your day typing on this. Though the, the flex never goes away though, so just be prepared for that too. Something that I thought would be a bigger problem during the unboxing is I, I thought that this might cause some discomfort while working with the Surface Laptop 4, but honestly, in the past week, this hasn't bothered me at all. The keys on this laptop are absolutely fantastic. These keys are better in my book than the Asus G14 keyboard, and it's right up there with the MacBook. And that's, for me, that's high praise as far as I'm concerned. I've complained about this twice so far, but I won't go into the flex again. But if this keyboard didn't have so much flex, I would probably consider this to be the equivalent of the MacBook. The keys are all nice and springy. They are perfectly laid out. And I've had, so far, hours long typing sessions here without my hands getting tired. Listen to this. Can you hear this? These just, these keys feel so good. The felt material itself isn't the worst thing on the planet. I think that's another feature that will come down to personal preference. And I don't think I mind it all that much. We will though have to see how it holds up after a few months of use. But so far it doesn't smudge. So that's a pretty big positive in my book. I mean, look at the razor blades that I've checked out. Those things smudge like you even think about touching those and they smudge. So this doesn't do that. I don't have to clean my computer as much. So hooray. And that leads me into the next thing I've enjoyed. The power on the laptop is actually pretty good. It's not mind shatteringly amazing, but for what you get, it's a pretty good worker. You can see from my runs of Cinebench R23, this is a pretty respectable multi-core score, which the Ryzen 5 processor having six cores probably helps with that. And while in single core, it's not leading the charts, but if you are using this as a productivity machine, this will more than keep up with all of your daily tasks. If you get one of the Intel versions, I imagine these two numbers would be flipped as the 11th gen Intel is pretty high up on the charts when it comes to single core, 
but even the i7 is a quad core machine. So in that case, I would expect lower numbers on the multi-core score there. Either way, it's hard to argue that this is a weak machine because no matter the configuration, it does have power where it counts. Speaking of power and overall usability, something else that I've liked is I really like how quiet the fans are. This is a Windows laptop based on x86 architecture. So there is definitely going to be fan noise here. This isn't an M1 Mac, you know, but here the fans have kicked on a few times for me during those Cinebench tests and in my quick trial of WoW Classic. And even when it seemed like they were at their peak, it was a pretty subdued sound. These days, I have a real hair trigger in getting annoyed at loud laptops, but the Surface 4, again, the Ryzen edition that I have, has not given me any real trouble or any real complaint from a noise perspective. Plus, thermally, this computer seems to be managed well enough with good enough fans and a decent low power processor that I can't imagine there really being a problem where the computer would need to thermally throttle. Now, because of its lack of a dedicated GPU, I haven't really run it through the mill graphically. Now, I wouldn't use this for video editing or anything like that, but it's not really designed for that either. Integrated graphics is okay, unless you're talking about Apple integrated graphics. Then Apple integrated graphics Okay, it's really good. The next thing that I've liked in this computer is Windows Hello. Wow. Having this on a productivity machines makes me really wanna see Face ID come to the MacBooks. You don't think you'd need it until you have it. It's so nice to validate passwords or even start the computer as soon as it's opened. I found this to be very quick and very responsive and it even works when I'm not in the best lighting conditions and I don't have like this gigantic light blasting a spotlight directly at my face. I really, really like this and I want face biometric authentication to come to more laptops in the future. And last but certainly not least, I know some of you are like, why haven't you talked about this yet, Gary? We're getting, why haven't you, it's amazing. I'm, I promise I'm getting there. I love, I don't like, I love the battery life. Microsoft says that the Ryzen version of the Surface Laptop 4 will get 19.5 hours of battery life. And while I haven't run mine to that level of dry yet, what I will say is I spent a week off and on using this laptop and I didn't need to charge it once. The only time I plugged this computer in was to run the Cinebench test and the WoW test because Windows computers suffer performance hits when you don't have them on wall power. And only doing that for what, like 20, 30 minutes? The computer hasn't even hit half power. In this week, this computer has not hit half power. This is the battery life we need on computers, especially work laptops. Your workday will never, well, hopefully never be 19 hours long, but running out of battery at inopportune moments really, really sucks. And it can professionally embarrass you. Having to not worry about that is peace of mind that is almost priceless. And I will never trust my professional life to a computer that can only meet that eight hour workday requirement ever again. This is where you need to go. So seriously, Great work here, Microsoft. But at the end of the day, so what, right? Is the Surface Laptop 4 worth buying when there are other fantastic options out there from other companies? And I'm not gonna name any names, but they rhyme with Snapple. Full disclosure, I like the Surface Laptop 4 more than I actually thought I would. I like it a lot, actually, and that's what makes the port selection and body flex such a pain in the butt. If this fit better into somebody's working from home setup with a wider array of ports, or I guess even one Thunderbolt port, the Surface Laptop 4 would make a whole lot of sense. Reasonably priced, great battery life, Windows Hello. It's awesome, like you add those three up, you get awesome, but it doesn't. And while my own personal work computer doesn't have Thunderbolt, it has HDMI, Ethernet, lots of USB-A, and things that are really needed to fit into a standard office workspace. And it's not that much bigger or that much thicker than the Surface Laptop 4. Plus I didn't mention it in the body of the video because I'm pretty meh about it, but the Surface 4 does have a touchscreen, but Windows 10 isn't really a touch optimized OS when I'm using it. So I just never ended up using the touchscreen. Plus I don't wanna clean the screen by getting all my grimy fingerprints on it. And if you're going to be doing a lot of typing, that flex will eventually drive you insane. So I would recommend a metal version of the Surface 4 if you are looking for a travel Windows laptop that gives you all day battery life and you will never really look to turn this into a working from home computer, then yes, I could recommend the Surface Laptop 4. The battery life alone is not something to scoff about and I hope more manufacturers do this in the future. But if you aren't married to the Windows ecosystem, there is probably a better option out there that is better in every single way and costs less money. What is it? Oh, that's for the next video. Thanks to today's sponsor, Squarespace, you can create your own very beautiful website. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a professional website, online store, 
or portfolio. It's so easy to claim a domain slash URL, create a custom site that matches your style and brings your ideas to life. Head on over to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, head on over to squarespace.com slash everyday dad to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. And thank you for watching.